You may not recognise his face uh, or recognise, like me, his voice or know anything about him or care. But our next guest kept the nation entertained all <laughs> summer as the witty and insightful commentator on Love Island. And he's here to settle a Love Island bet that he made with Piers, cynical Piers Morgan, who said no one ever stays together after Love Island. We're going to have a quick reminder of that bet back in July. 2017. Absolutely none of these little wretched specimens so will be rude. with each other within a calendar year of today. Do you know what? I'd like to bet one, on £1, £1, pounds to charity. Live on television, £100, I'll take that bet. £100 to charity, right but none of them yeah. are with each other charity in a year. Choosing. We'll have you back deal. in a year. Absolute deal. Right. So, Piers. are any of these wretched specimens still together? Jamie and Camilla from the final are very much together and very much ah. in love. OK. Well, I'm a man who honours his bets, honours his debts. Big time. Here we are, from the bank of Piers Morgan, <laughs> £100, or as I call it, 20 seconds work. Hey, I'm it. He's not some, lying either. It'll go to a very worthy cause. <laughs> How, what has Love Island done for your love life? For my love life? Yeah. Well, um, no, I'm not a great deal. <laughs> I've got to be in Spain for two months in the year, which is inconvenient. <laughs> but otherwise, it's been sort of quite good. There you are with the lovely Laura Whitmore. Yeah. Oh, you're celebrating a year together. We've been together for over a year now. Uh, you're with Laura Whitmore? I didn't I'm... know that. Yeah, you did. Really? You were talking to me beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't realise you were actually an item. Beforehand, off camera, Piers was telling me how much he enjoys my work. <laughs> <laughs> how he can't his, air his, himself his away. The screensaver on his phone is Jeremy in, Corbyn. In, <laughs> in, you know you should never lie to the British public. It's a bit like when you say Love Island contestants are intelligent. Don't do it. Some no of them are believes. very intelligent. We've got doctors. Yes, and got nuclear, humanitarian, nuclear, electrical physics. systems engineers. Lots of intelligence. Let me ask you, on a serious point, you, you do a brilliant commentary to it, there's no denying that. Mm. The, the phenomenon of Love Island has completely passed me by. I don't get it, yeah. I don't really understand it, but I'm I mean, persuaded. some of my children absolutely love it. Yeah. I'm aware it's a phenomenon. Why do you think? Has it become such a big thing? I think it's the whole relationship element of any drama, any reality TV show, anything has at the heart of it a romance. So what Love Island has done is taken out all the fluff and just concentrated purely on the romantic element because there is something mesmerising as human beings in watching people fall in love. Do they fall in love with, with each other or do they fall in love with the idea of being a commercially lucrative couple? Well, again, Which is what my cynical heart tells me they Well, do. again, who knows, but this is another element. You get to sit there every day and forensically work out, dissect in your mind what you think is going to go happen. It's just yeah. a sort of psychological... Any of them ever got married? Um, we've got married with ch children. You, Cara you're going and to a Cara, wedding, aren't you? Cara and Nathan from Series 2 are married with a child. Alex and Olivia, runners-up series two, are getting married this month. So some of them do end up in yeah. long-lasting relationships. Yeah, we've got um, Carly from series two's had a bit child with her partner and they're still together. Oh. Yeah. What about this series? I mean, Jack and Daddy, obviously, clearly. Um, but um, what's your money on um, the other couples? Well, I mean, I'm more than happy to take the same bet again, this time next year, Piers. You know what the trouble is? I think they're doing it just to get me to pay up for money. <laughs> I really do. That's the problem. You uh, also benefit personally, don't you? Because you've become much more high profile. Oh, massively, and yes. And now you're out on tour. Yes. And you've got a book. Mm -hmm. And, of course, all of that... You're on a... tour? What as the voice man for Love Island? No, he was I, a stand-up stand stand anyway. Stand-up comedy You're peers. a comedian? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See, he just made you laugh. <laughs> What's the book called? You never mentioned it when we were on holiday together once. Not ready to adult yet, the book is called. You were on holiday together? We, yes, holiday. We, we, we recoupled, yes. That's how they celebrated their anniversary with television's Richard Arnold. Was Laura there? Laura was there, oh, yes. Well, she was relief. present, otherwise it would have been <laughs> a you little bit awkward. You the beautiful Laura Whitmore on a holiday and you bring him... He as came, the, he as the came, chief gooseberry. He came out of a cake with a Piers Morgan mask on. <laughs> it was the most romantic night of my it life. You all have been together. It, it was a beautiful, beautiful moment, wasn't it? I was 90% gin once we'd finished. <laughs> so, Ian, Ian, given that you are the voice of Love Island, yes. are you, are you going to do the decent thing and marry <gasps> Laura and settle down with her and have little Would you like to little do it on Ian's national television? Do you know what? I feel really bad because whenever I speak to a couple in the front row of my comedy show, yeah. the joke is I'll always try and make the man propose. Yeah. And now I realise what a terrible, awful thing yeah. that is to put someone on the spot like yeah. that. So you won't be proposing to Laura? 
what in front of you right now? Yeah. yeah. No, I think you would put me off a little bit, Piers. I don't really want the, my l future love life to be tainted with like you. Well, I'm more talking about it. your. I'm talking about your current love life. I, but you are in love. Yeah, right? of course I am. You are yeah. Mr. Love to the world. I mean, I'm Mr. Love. Is there anything you want to say to Laura down the camera lens today? Hi, watching? Laura. Sorry, I, after the shower this morning, I forgot to put my pants in the dirty wash, and I apologise. Oh. I you love old, you very much. You old romantic, so you. That was, that was really romantic. <laughs> <laughs> I felt my heart flutter there for a moment, and then remembered. And the book is called... <laughs> Not, oh, thank you. Yes, it's why you're here, son. Mm. My new book, Not Ready to Add Up Yet, is about the millennial generation, why we struggle to grow up as a generation. Is He'll it, love it. Oh. Is it because <laughs> we're work-shy snowflakes or have we been brought up in a difficult time? Uh, work-shy kind of snowflakes <laughs> Difficult, miles, difficult right? time. Mm. <laughs> um, Susanna, feel sorry for you. everybody about I everything. Do. I feel sorry for everyone and mm. everyone's beautiful. Yeah, but not everyone's beautiful. There's some ugly ones out there too. There are. Everyone is beautiful in their own way, not, some Even people, you. Some people aren't Even beautiful. You. They're not beautiful aesthetically. They're not beautiful spiritually. They're just ugly people. Why I are we afraid here. as a society <laughs> to say so-and-so is ugly? Who? You look ugly. You sound ugly. You are ugly. Or you could just be like a What nice is wrong with that? Being. Exactly When do we right. stop saying people are ugly when they're ugly? Stop trolling people on national television.